Hello there, it's Menopause Taylor again. <laughs> I sure hope you don't get tired of seeing me over and over again on this channel because I sure don't tire of making these videos for you. I absolutely love it. I think of so many things that I can teach you to make your menopausal life easier. Ideas come from everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes your comments bring to light a distinction that is not clear for you. And when that happens, I start conjuring up ideas about how I can make sure you understand it fully. One of the areas that repeatedly reveals itself as murky is the similarities and differences between hormones that are bioidentical, compounded, custom, and pharmaceutical. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. We're smack dab in the middle of a unit on the problems, principles, and powers of menopause management. This one is going to be about one of the principles of menopause management. And since so many women have preferences that pertain to these similarities and differences, I'm going to clear them up for you. If you're referring to my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, this information is in chapter six under the section entitled Bioidentical Hormones. If you've ever heard any of the terms bioidentical, compounded, custom, or pharmaceutical, then you should watch this video to get them straight once and for all. So when I say those terms, bioidentical, compounded, custom, or pharmaceutical, comes to mind for you? You know, we all have areas that are blind spots for us. These are the topics that are pretty meaningless to you. And whenever someone talks about that topic, your eyes just kind of glaze over and you tune out the entire conversation because you're just so disinterested that merely hearing anything about that topic just sort of makes you weak. For me, it's cars. I hate cars. I hate everything about cars. I hate being in one, needing one, taking care of one, driving one. That's why I prefer to live where I don't need a car. So when someone starts talking about cars, I really just can't follow the conversation. And as a result, I can't tell one car from another. They just mean nothing to me. I remember a funny incident when I was living in Monaco. You know, Monaco is a place that is dripping with rich people who have rich things. I'm not one of them. <laughs> and the cars in Monaco are all really ritzy cars. Of course, I couldn't identify any of them, but everybody has Bentleys and Rolls Royces and Lamborghinis and such. And because everybody is so rich, nobody pays much attention to these fancy, expensive cars. Well, every day when I went to the gym, I walked right in front of the famous Monte Carlo Opera House and Casino. And there are always a bunch of fa rich, fancy cars parked right in front where I walked. There's usually a gawking tourist drooling over one car or another, but for the most part, the cars are largely ignored. However, one day there was a huge crowd <laughs> around one of the cars. And oddly enough, it wasn't a crowd of tourists. When you live in a tourist town, you can always identify the tourists. This crowd of people were definitely not tourists. I even recognized some of them as friends and gym buddies. Well, given the fact that the fancy cars in Monaco never attract much attention from the locals, and given the fact that I don't care at all about cars, I just found it odd that so many people would be ogling a car. And when I got close enough to see the car, I discovered why. <laughs> it was a Volkswagen bug. <laughs> and they had never seen one before. <laughs> so in talking about blind spots, <laughs> it could be that these categories of hormones are something that you've never given much thought to. Or maybe you've just never needed to. But there will come a time when you need to know the similarities and differences. So I'm going to teach you that today, 
hopefully in a more entertaining way than you'd find it elsewhere. So let's start with one of my quiz questions. Bioidentical hormones. A, always produce fewer side effects. B, can be obtained only from a compounding pharmacy. C, are always custom made. D, are always made from plants. E, can never be synthetic are not FDA tested and approved. G, all of the above. H, none of the above. I, A, B, and C above. Are you scratching your head? If you are, just be glad you're watching. That's precisely why I'm giving you this tutorial. Here's the question again with the answer in bold. If you're like most women, you're a bit surprised, wondering how this can be the answer. It's none of the above. The problem lies not in understanding the definitions of these four terms. Bioidentical, compounded, custom, and pharmaceutical. You have to know those definitions. Each one includes certain characteristics and excludes certain characteristics. The key is to understand which of these four terms can be found together in a single product and which cannot. So let's start by defining some terms and then you'll understand what each term means. And once you understand what each term means, you'll know which combinations of these four terms can be found together in a single product and which cannot. We'll start with the term that creates most of the confusion. Bioidentical. For some strange reason, that term gets so misconstrued. I don't know if it's because it contains the prefix bio, or if it's because people market it as natural, or if it's because people make inaccurate distinctions between products that come from different sources, but whatever it is, I don't want you falling prey to misinformation. So here's the definition of bioidentical. Bioidentical only means that the molecules of the product are identical to the molecules of that same product that your own body produced. So in the case of bioidentical hormones, it means that the hormone product has the same chemical structure as a hormone your body produced. In video 32, I taught you about the three estrogens that your body produced back in the day when your body was producing estrogen and you didn't need me. <laughs> so I'm gonna use estrogen as an example here. What I want you to focus on though is the terms. This is not a video on estrogen. I don't want you to write in your comments, why didn't you cover progesterone? I covered bioidentical progesterone in video 37 ages ago, and I covered bioidentical testosterone in video 44. So using estrogen as an example, you learned that your body produced three estrogens, estrone, O-N-E, for one, estradiol, D-I, for two, and estriol, T-R-I, for three. They each have a different function. Estrone is produced in your fat cells. It's the one we hate because it makes us fat. Estradiol is the one that makes you feel feminine and normal with no symptoms or diseases of menopause. Estriol is the one you produce to support a pregnancy. And here's what they look like. Now, don't worry, you needn't learn these structures. I'm just using them to give you an idea about the differences between these three bioidentical estrogens. First, notice how similar they are. They all have the same three hexagons connected to a pentagon to create the basic ringed structure. All that changes from one estrogen to the next is the things that are dangling off of them. So if you look at the first structure, 
It's estrone. O-N-E means one. And look, it only has one H-O dangling off of it. The second structure is estradiol. Di means two. And look, it, all, it has two H-O's dangling off of it. The H-O and the O-H are the same thing. In chemistry, we just put the O closest to the rings. And the third structure is this triol. Tri means three. And it has three H-O's dangling off of it. So bioidentical estrogen simply means that the estrogen is one of these three structures. And that is all it means. It has nothing to do with where the hormone came from, or who made it, or what was used to make it. So if someone makes one of these three estrogens from a plant, even though you and the plant are completely different biologically, the hormone is bioidentical. Now just think about how different you are from a plant, and yet, a hormone made from a plant can be bioidentical if it has one of these three structures. So if that were the case, would you Consider it natural. If someone makes one of these three molecules in a lab out of chemicals, it's still bioidentical. Even though the chemicals aren't what you would consider natural, the molecules they become is identical to the molecule in your body. Would you consider that natural? If someone whips up a batch of one of these three hormones in a compounding pharmacy, it's bioidentical. The molecules are still identical to those your own body made. And if someone whips up a batch of one of these three hormones in a pharmaceutical company, it's still bioidentical. The molecules are those are the molecules are identical to those your own body made. Now, because bioidentical hormones are identical in molecular structure to the molecules your body produced, they fit more perfectly into the spots where they need to bind in order to work. It's like puzzle pieces. When you put pieces of a puzzle together, if one of them is a human molecule and the other one is a bioidentical molecule, the bioidentical molecule will fit perfectly, snugly. It's absolutely perfect. A non-bioidentical molecule will not fit as snug snugly. It can still occupy the spot, but it's just not as perfect a fit. That is the difference between the way the molecules work if they're bioidentical versus non-bioidentical. So the notion is that because bioidentical molecules fit better, they'll work better and have fewer side effects. It would be logical for your body to recognize a bioidentical molecule as less foreign and to metabolize it more easily than a non-bioidentical mo molecule. And there's some merit in that, but there's more to hormones than just a perfect fit. And bioidentical hormones don't always work better or have fewer side effects. The problems arise when you start taking into account the factors having to do with the production of the hormone. Just because it's bioidentical does not mean it will work better. And that has nothing to do with the fact that it's bioidentical. It has to do with the fact that women confuse and combine the term bioidentical with the other terms that we're addressing today. What were those other terms? Compounded, custom, and pharmaceutical. So let's go on and address each of them and see how they interact with the term bioidentical. Compounding means combining. That's it. It means that someone added substances together. Notice that there is absolutely nothing about that term that is specific to or implies a bioidentical quality to the product. Compounding takes place in compounding pharmacies. Compounding pharmacies are freestanding facilities that do not have the standards, regulations, oversights, or guarantees 
that are characteristic of a pharmaceutical drug. In the last video, I compared the differences between di dietary supplements and pharmaceutical drugs. And you learned that the biggest differences lie in the standards, regulations, oversight, and guarantees. The bottom line was that the dietary supplement in industry does not have to adhere to any of the rules imposed on the pharmaceutical companies. But the result is that you do not have any way to be sure of what you're getting in a dietary supplement. Well, this same difference applies to compounding pharmacies. So a compounding pharmacy can combine substances to make these three bioidentical estrogens, but you never know how strong they really are or how pure they really are. And that changes everything. If the compounded hormone isn't as strong or reliable as the non-compounded hormone, it almost negates the benefits of being bioidentical. All day long during my one-on-one -on -one consultations with women, I hear that they still suffer from their symptoms of menopause even though they're taking a compounded bioidentical hormone. They are shocked that although they are supposedly taking a superior hormone, it hasn't alleviated their symptoms. Well, their dissatisfaction is not because it's bioidentical, it's because it's compounded. <laughs> now, this is a good place to address the third term, which is custom. Most compounding pharmacies make big batches of compounded hormones. It's cheaper for them, and they can use fillers to make more of the product than if they had to follow the strict FDA rules for quality, consistency, and purity. And they make two standard batches for bioidentical estrogen. And they make them according to how much of these three estrogens you used to have during your reproductive life. Your body used to have 10% estrone, 10% estradiol, and 80% estriol. So compounding pharmacies mimic these ratios to some extent with their two standard batches. One of the standard batches is called triest. Triest consists of the exact same ratio of the three hormones that you had during your reproductive life. 10% estrol, 10% estradiol, and 80% estriol. Obviously, you don't like the estrone from your fat cells. It makes you fatter, so you probably don't want more of it, but it's in there. And you certainly aren't going to need estriol for pregnancy, but it's in there too. The other standard batch of compounded estrogen by compounding pharmacies is called bi-est. Bi means two. It only contains two of the three estrogens. It does not contain any estrone, 0% estrone, 20% estradiol, and 80% estriol. And again, even though you don't need estriol for pregnancy, it constitutes the majority of the formulation. I needed to tell you all this in order to explain what the word custom means. Custom refers to compounded hormones that are not made from a batch. Instead, they are customized just for you. So a custom compounded formulation would have whatever proportions your doctor designates. It might have 30% estradiol and 70% estriol, or 60% estradiol and 40% estriol, or 10% estrone, 50% estradiol, and 40% estriol, whatever. It can be made in any, any proportion. Now, how one decides what the proportion should be is beyond me. <laughs> and that is because the only estrogen you need for menopause is estradiol. It's the only one that has a useful function for you anymore. Unless you just want estrone to make you fatter. 
or estriol to support a non-existent pregnancy. <laughs> The only estrogen you need is estradiol. All your symptoms of menopause and all the diseases associated with menopause are due to loss of estradiol. They have absolutely nothing to do with the other two estrogens. But you can only get custom hormones from a compounding pharmacy, which means Da, 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 da. You don't really know what you're getting because of the absence of regulations. So the reason women complain that their bioidentical or compounded or custom hormones aren't working is because they are made with no regulations to ensure that they work. And that brings us to our final term, pharmaceutical. The word pharmaceutical means that the hormone was made by a pharmaceutical company. That's all. It has nothing to do with the substances from which it was made. It can be made from exactly the same ingredients that a compounding pharmacy uses. It can be made from plants. It can be made from animal products. It can be made from chemicals. A bioidentical hormone made by a pharmaceutical company will be composed of the same molecules that are identical to the molecules in your human body. Estrone, estradiol, or estriol. With one major difference. It will be 100% estradiol. This difference is because compounded and pharmaceutical bioidentical hormones are products of the two different camps in medicine. Compounded hormones belong to the alternative and complementary camp, while pharmaceutical bioidentical hormones belong to the traditional medical camp. And the two camps have different philosophies about hormone replacement for menopause. The alternative and complementary camp believes it's best to mimic the hormone ratios you had during your reproductive life. And they claim that using mostly the weak estriol that is for pregnancy is safer. The traditional medical camp believes it's best to give you the one estrogen your body needs for menopause. So all the pharmaceutical bioidentical estrogen products will be 100% estradiol. So they're stronger, but because they're stronger, they work better for alleviating your symptoms of menopause and preventing the diseases associated with menopause. And because they're pharmaceutical products, they have to conform to the strict standards of purity, quality, and consistency. And because they have to conform to the strict standards of the FDA, they are stronger, more consistent, and tend to work much better than compounded hormones. But of course, they're not designed just for you. They aren't customized. The key to understanding the ramifications of the four terms is to realize that they don't all imply the same thing. You have to address each one separately. After that, then you're left with the various combinations of these terms. For instance, you can have a bioidentical hormone that is either compounded or pharmaceutical. A compounded bioidentical hormone can either be customized or non-customized. But when you see any of these terms combined, address them separately. Each term has limitations to its meaning. Don't let the meaning of one creep over and affect the meaning of another. I think most of the problems come from assumptions that have nothing to do with the actual definitions of these terms. The other problems come from confusing the terms. That's why I took the time to walk you through all of this. So I've made you a chart revealing all the features of these various combinations and that way you won't make incorrect assumptions. Now, I'm not going to walk you through this chart. 
item by item, but the general trend boils down to just a few basic principles. The chart shows all the bioidentical options in pink and all the non-bioidentical options in green. Along the far left-hand column, you see all the factors that are pertinent to any of the terms we've covered today. A plus sign means yes, while a negative sign means no. If you see a plus slash negative, it means yes or no. It can be either. Principle one is that if it's bioidentical, it will be identical to your human molecules and have a perfect fit. But that does not imply anything about how it will work for you. If it's non-bioidentical, it will not be identical to your human molecules and it will not have a perfect fit. But that also does not imply anything about how it will work for you. Principle two is that the word compounded has nothing to do with whether or not it's bioidentical. The same is true for the word custom. Principle three is that the word pharmaceutical does not negate the possibility of a hormone being bioidentical. And pharmaceutical hormones are the only ones that are FDA approved. When you look at it this way, it becomes fairly simple. You can find this chart in the comment box just below the screen or at my website, which is menopausetaylor.me. The message is that you have to address each of these terms separately. Don't lump them all together automatically. Each term has a special meaning. And I think that does it for today. For consultations, go to menopausetaylor.me. To subscribe, click subscribe. <laughs> to follow me, go to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And for next week's video, I'll talk about the role you play in the status of menopause in the world today. I will see you then. Bye.